Sukihonto. Welcome to our Sunday Dharma Talk organized by Shah Alam Buddhist Society. And a wonderful good morning to all of you, dear sisters and brothers in the Dharma. Thank you for tuning in via YouTube and Facebook. My name is Karin and I am your host for today. So let us start with some morning puja by chanting together to as a mark of respect for the great compassion and wisdom of the Buddha and to reaffirm our faith in the three jewels. I invite all of us to put our hands together as we are guided by this puja video. And Sadhu, 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 Namo Dasse Bhagavato, Arehato, Samma Sambuddhasse, Namo Dasse Bhagavato, Arehato, Samma Sambuddhasse, Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhasse Buddham Sarenam Gachami Dhammam Sarenam Gachami Sangham Sarenam Gachami Dutiyam pi buddham sarenam gachami Dutiyam pi dhammam sarenam gachami Dutiyam pi sangham sarenam gachami Tatiyam pi buddham sarenam gachami Tatiyam pi dhammam sarenam gachami Tatiyam pi sangham sarenam gachami Anati pata veramani sikka padam samadhyami Adinna dana veramani Sikha padam samadhyami Kami su mincha chara veramani Sikha padam samadhyami Musabada veramani Sikha padam samadhyami Sura me re manje pama datta na ve re mani sikka padam samadhyami iti viso bhagava areham samma sambundo vinja charene sampano subeto lope vidu Anutteo purisedam sarati satta deva manusansanam bundho bhagavati Swakarato bhagavata dhammo sandhintiko akaliko ehipasiko openaiko Pachattam veditam go vinyu hiti Supadipanno bhagavato sāvak sanggo Ujjopatipanno bhagavato sāvak sanggo Nyāyapatipanno bhagavato sāvak sanggo Sāmi jipati pannu bhagavato sāvaka sanggo 
Yadidam Chantari Purisa Yugani Atte Purisa Pungala Esa Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dhamkineyo Anjali Karaniyo Anuntaram Punyam Kintam Lokasam Sati Sadhu 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 Welcome back. So for this morning, we are very, very grateful to have Sister Carol Koch with us as our guest speaker. She will be kickstarting the very first of our uh, Veil of Illusion series. And this will be a three-part series which will take place today on 19th of September and also on the 17th of October. So this morning, we will start with Illusions and Bubbles which is the very first part of her series. Now, this series has been described as jaw-dropping, and we will even be exposed to the secrets of the universe. How does that sound? I am certainly very, very curious about what will unfold, aren't you? <laughs> so, before we start with this very, very interesting topic, let me introduce a little bit about Sister Carol. Now, Sister Carol is currently a chartered accountant who graduated from the University of Malaya back in 1992. She was born into a Buddhist family and has been trying to understand Buddhism since a very young age. She practiced meditation under Thera Theravada Vipassana meditation since 2001, and she has been spending a fortnight every year in intensive meditation retreats. With a background from Mahayana and Theravada, Theravada, she now emphasizes on daily practical application of Buddhism in life, as she believes that Buddhism is only knowledge if, we, if it is kept in our notes and our sutras within religious spaces. So Sister Carol believes that Buddhism has to be assimilated into our life before we can see just how magnificent and magical it can transform our lives. So for the next hour or so, while Sister Carol is sharing and as we are listening in and as we are watching her, uh, feel free to post any questions or comments on the Facebook or YouTube chats. Sister Carol will address as many questions or comments as possible today. So without further ado, let me bring her to the stage and uh, pass her, pass the floor to her, yeah? Morning, Sister Carol. Morning. Morning, everybody. So I, will pass, I will now pass the stage to you. Okay, yeah? I'll take over from here, right? Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. I have not been seeing everybody for quite a while because of MCO, you know? And uh, before I start, I have a few things to, you know, share with everybody. First thing first, uh, please do pardon my English because I have not been speaking English for such a seminar like that for at least past two years. So most of, because my mother tongue is uh, either uh, basically Cantonese. Huh? Okay. And then today we are going to start with uh, the first series, uh, the first chapter of a 10 series uh, 10, sorry, the first chapter of a series of 10 chapters, okay? And, uh, okay, what we did was, uh, last time, we, this actually is our fourth uh, series. The first series, uh, the first series was this, 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 this. I hope everybody still remember, you know, this is about who am I, right? And then the second series, all done in SABS before, uh, the second series was this, uh, on tolerance okay so and then the third series was this one it was uh, it was done i think in 2019 right so this is the, the 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 last the latest series that we did okay on on uh, effort right and 
this year onwards, we're going to try to complete a series of this, this, this is the fourth, this, okay? And uh, it's everything about illusions and bubbles, okay? Uh, uh, this whole series consists of 10 chapters. And today we are sharing the first chapter whereby we are touching everything very briefly. Uh, however, it will be elaborated more uh, into the series, into the chapters, okay? So before we start, shall we uh, do some chanting on the opening of Sutta? Okay, uh? I share screen first. Uh? Okay. All right. Okay, so I will chant the, the Sutta from my side. Okay, so everybody, if you wish, you can just uh, chant together with me. Uh? Verse for opening a Sutta. The unsurpassed, profound, and wonderful Dharma is difficult to encounter in hundreds of millions of eons. I now see and hear it, receive and uphold it, and I vow to fathom the Tathagata's true meaning. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay. So, now we are coming on to... Uh, here you go. Why everyone? Put like that. Ah, okay. Veil of illusions. Okay. So to today the series, uh, the chapter is about illusions and bubble. Okay. And uh, just like what Karen was saying, it can be jaw dropping for some people, right? So okay. So now, uh, we want to reveal a very great secret. Secret of the universe for this entire existence of ours, okay? We would like to, like, you know, be, they told us a lie, okay? We would like to, everything lie to us that this secret, uh, they, we would like to about this secret since time in memoria, since existence, okay? So today we shall reveal this secret. What is this secret? Actually, everything physical around us is not real, okay? Including the things that we see, we touch, we feel, our possessions, our house, our car, our loved ones, my mother, my father, my spouse, my children, even ourselves, my body, they are not real, okay? We are living in a vast computer software that is proclaimed by some of the scientists. Of course, not all agree, but many of the scientists agree, okay? Including even uh, the Buddha, okay? In the decoding the deepest secret sutta, which is Kaisa uh, Matin, within this sutta spoken by the Buddha, Okay? The Bodhisattva inside the, the Sutta, the Bodhisattva was telling another Bodhisattva, all right, in front of the Buddha. He said, Samsara is the creation of my teacher, who is the Buddha. Okay, how is it being created? It is created together with the Buddha, together with some of his master disciples. That means the Maha Bodhisattvas, who all of them are master magicians master magicians okay so the sutta already very specifically spelled out the whole thing is created we are in a created universe okay it's not organic it's not by chance you know everything is planned right the very moment we enter into samsara okay just like you know you look at this this uh, it's like we are in a Buddha nature, okay? So when we enter into samsara from source, which is our Buddha nature, this source is the Buddha nature, with just an intention or even a thought, okay? Duality begins. There's duality. We feel existence. Why do you feel yourself exist? You cannot exist all by yourself. You need a relative object. Then you feel, hey, um, I exist. Okay? Because there's a distance already. We call this duality. 
Okay, so when you enter into this duality, we are entering into, we are starting a uh, beginning uh, into a dream. A dream, uh, this is the, the journey of the dream. Okay, just like this slide. Uh. Right, you see the distance there? This distance is actually the duality. So once we enter duality, we are in a dream. Okay. This is actually also spoken by a lot of scientists and philosophers of the day today, modern philosophers today, lah, by this guy called Nick Bostrom. Okay, let me write down. Huh? His name is Nick. You can you can check on uh, you can check on YouTube. Huh? Eh, Nick Bostrom. B O S. He's a very young philosopher from Oxford University 20 years, nearly 20 years ago, back in 2003. Okay, he purported this theory called the simulation theory. Right? Back in 2003, even Elon Musk, yeah, very famous guy now, huh? Elon Musk also said, uh, purported this idea. He said there's only one in billions of chance one in billion, one in billions of chance that we are not in a simulation. That means he said we are definitely in a simulation. Okay. What is the simulation? It is something a simile to it. It's like we began to log into a vast and very complicated virtual computer game. We are in a computer game, you know. Okay with a computer character that we take on called the human body, right? So this is the simulation theory purported by the philosopher and also the, a lot of, of the scientists are, who actually also purported this. So with this revelation, okay, with this revelation, some felt upset and cried. I don't know why, okay? I told some friends, they cried after they hear this. Some felt very angry and unacceptable. Maybe like got con already, you know, got betrayed. How come everything not real, okay? But some felt really relief. Phew, everything is not real. No need to be so serious, okay? So it depends on how you look at different people see it differently, okay? But this is the truth, okay? We shall explore very briefly from two aspects. One's from the scientific aspect, another one from the spiritual aspect, okay? Scientific, we are talking from quantum physics. And spiritual side is definitely uh, from the suttas, right? Because science and technology must coexist together, as we know. You're right, because only technology or maybe science actually is very dangerous because we don't have direction. A lot of civilizations in the past, uh, actually they collapsed because they, had, they, they placed too much emphasis on technology, no spirituality. However, solely on spirituality, also no good because it becomes very lame, lame, no strength. So both have to exist together but definitely spirituality have to go in front of technology, you know, because uh, the direction is very important uh, or else people, uh, human being or, or any beings uh, will become very greedy, you know, lost their directions and then forgot why they came here for, you know, so both have to exist together. That's why we explain uh, this secret from these two aspects. Okay. Okay. How did, okay, before we go into this existence, this universe we call this dream, right? So how did this existence come about? Okay, let's look at what the Buddha said first, okay? Under Abhidharma Kosa, okay, the Buddha said, when a universe was born, it appeared suddenly out of thin air. Pum! Okay, just like our Big Bang like that. Right? So, in, sorry, 
in February 2008. Okay, 2008. Stephen Hawking, actually, who just passed away a few years ago. Okay, Stephen Hawking, actually, inside the TED Talk, he said before, the universe spontaneously created itself out of nothing. His conclusion was in excellent agreement, means proven uh, with the observations by this WAP satellite, they call WMAP satellite. Okay, so this satellite is actually uh, responsible for observing cosmic, is a cosmic microwave background, which is an imprint of very early universe. They check all the imprint from the early universe uh, actually match with what Stephen Hawking's uh, finding. That means his calculations. Uh, okay. So Stephen Hawking said, we think we have solved the mystery of creation. Means agree, agree already, uh, but also tied to the uh, sutta. Right. Then what did the scientists say, say about the universe and the samsara. That means the brief conclusions of some scientists, some scientists okay? Uh, definitely when we want to look at this aspect, we have to go into quantum mechanics or quantum physics, okay? Quantum mechanics is very important because it gave us all the technology advancement because with the coming of quantum mechanics, we have all this advanced technology, okay? Things like we, what we enjoy today, like our fiber optics, our microchips, our handphone, our internet, you know, all that bring humanity so much of comfort and convenience, right? Very great, right? So, but yet quantum mechanics is pointing at one truth, this truth that nothing physical is real. Remember the double sleep experiment we shared last few years. You know, this experiment, we can go on to the YouTube and look at how this experiment works. Actually, by a virtue of a force, you know, a force, things become real, things solidify, or else it's all wave function. Okay? So this quantum mechanics from all these experiments, actually the scientists are also very puzzled themselves, right? So quantum mechanics has been around for 100 years. With this 100 years of work, actually, they already are nearing the conclusion that everything is wave function. Frequency, energy. Okay, just like what Nikola Tesla was saying. If you want to know the secret of universe, what do you do? Look at the frequency, vibration, and energy. This is what he said, no. He's actually one of the smartest scientists around. In fact, Albert Einstein said he is smarter than him. <laughs> okay? So, they are nearing the conclusion because why? What they found, the smallest particle is actually quark, which actually 99.99999% of this quark uh, is actually emptiness itself also inside quark. So, now the latest one is actually string theory. They're trying to use string theory to prove everything is a wave, as energy. But they are still in the midst of doing it, like, using the like, collision of you know, the, 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 artic the particles. Huh? So however, in order to prove this string theory, huh, you need different dimensions. You know? That's why it's very difficult for the scientists now. Because now you, you only take on third dimension. I mean, three dimension plus time, four dimension. Huh? Okay, but actually we need fifth dimension, sixth dimension, and all together there are 11 dimensions. So now they are still working on this. Huh? But that's why they said nearing the conclusion. Very, very near. Because you know what? Because you see how the thing developed from molecule, atom, then the proton, photon, or something like that, and finally now quark. Okay, so another level come down, coming down is definitely wave function. Right, so this they said uh, all things are only probabilities. True, they are all probabilities until they are measured. What do you mean measured? Measured that means uh, you take on to it. That means 
by a virtue of a force, you choose this thing, it becomes real. Or else they are all probabilities. That's why we got multiple timelines. This is called parallel universe, multiple timeline. All this you can find in the YouTube and then you can do your research, okay? It's just like this morning, I want to eat bubo, I want to eat nasi lemak, I want to eat noodles. These are multiple timelines. Then I say, okay, finally, I eat bubo, I eat porridge. Okay, that porridge become my measure, become real. My nasi lemak and my noodles are, is actually another two timelines. Okay, to be exact, uh, this two timeline is actually created. That's why it's multiverse. You know, so these are the different timelines our thought can create. One. We are very powerful beings, you know. It's just that we are not told. We are not told. So we thought, no, nah, I chose uh, porridge only. Ma. The other two timelines is created. Okay, and it leave a, it leave a, what do you call that? It leave a, an impact on you know you can actually hop time timeline you can actually hop timeline timeline on you know but that one is a different topic lah, huh? okay scientists are saying we are almost certain that we are living in a giant computer simulation almost certain okay today with their findings the scientists are asking are things real are all things real? They are asking inside their heart also, inside their mind. Because during some interviews, some physicists confess, confess uh, that they are feeling very uncomfortable living in their own theories. Same. So they feel very uncomfortable living in their own theories. And in fact, they are actually two group now. Okay. Some said, I don't bother about how it ties back to life. Just use quantum mechanics to produce, you know, good technology for humanity. That's it. They cannot tie it back to life. You know, how if everything is not real, how to live on because they are not spiritual enough. But this is actually what the Buddha has been saying. Okay, nothing is real. So I no need to be so serious. Okay. Okay, now we hop on to what said what the Buddha said. Okay. Unlike the scientists trying to prove reality through external, you know, external findings. Okay, they, they prove reality externally. Scientists, ma, scientists. Okay. But the Buddha, because he's so wise and he has so high the psychic, he explained how reality is actually created internally by what by our consciousness because all is mine all is mine outside nothing one okay existence is an illusion because once we enter a dream our consciousness with the thought our consciousness make real of this physical reality physical objects through four main seats inside our subconscious mind. The four main seats. Okay, what are these seats inside the consciousness that make things so real? Okay. Four main seats of material elements in our consciousness. We call it um, earth, water, fire, and wind. Seed of liquidity and moisture inside our consciousness gives rise to both internal and external water element. This seed allows us to feel wetness, wet, between wet and dry. You feel it because of the consciousness. The seed inside the consciousness is playing the trick. Okay? Next, seed of tenacity inside our consciousness gives rise to both internal and external fire element. This seed allows us to feel heat, hot and cold. 
Okay? These four seeds are actually explained in Lanka Vatara Sutta. Okay? Lanka Vatara Sutta. And then thirdly, seed of movement inside our consciousness gives, gives rise to both internal and external wind element. This seed allow us to feel motion, things moving. That's why it's so real. We see movement and stillness. Okay? And finally, this is the worst one. So real because of seed of solidity, breakable and bendable. Okay? Inside our consciousness gives rise to both internal and external earth element. And this earth element allows us to feel solidity, heavy. Okay, hard, heavy, solid versus soft, light, you know, not so solid, you know, very soft, you know. Ah, all this feeling, lah. all this feeling actually is created by our consciousness, the four seeds inside our consciousness. Inside our consciousness, besides four seeds, there are two other things. Ah. Okay, we are talking about these four seeds now. Okay, this is elaborated in the Langa Vatara Sutta, right? And they are not even known by the scientists. Because until science, because why? Because scientists, uh, until today, they still do not recognize consciousness. They are very material. They are very material based on science today. But problem is quantum mechanics telling scientists, uh, excuse me, you cannot be material really. Cannot be materialistic really. Because at the end, you are approaching something telling you everything is it's just wave, just energy, just frequency. Okay? But today, scientists still cannot accept consciousness. Huh? Okay? But who is observing the universe? Who is observing the universe? It is the consciousness that's observing the universe. But if you don't recognize consciousness, that's why we are actually handicapped in that way. Because some scientists were saying, uh, oh, who was saying, I forgot already. They say if the scientists start to accept consciousness as part of their research or whatever, uh, their investigation, science uh, will improve in 10 years. Uh, in 10 years, science will improve uh, much more than what is since its inception. 10 years uh, can go more than what the, they, they, they achieve uh, since inception. But cannot, they still don't accept consciousness. Okay? So let us continue. These four main seeds, okay, give rise to all physical, physical things in existence, makes things very real, okay? And thus, we feel all this surrounding, like people, building, table, chair, mountain, river, even our own body. We thought it is real. See, our own body are all only frequencies and wave and energy. Okay? So coupled with, with these four seeds in the subconscious mind, Coupled with our senses, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our, you know, our mouth, you know, and our body touch, you know, all these senses are, uh, plus the four other aggregates. Remember the five aggregates? Uh, number one is, uh, hang on, I see. Uh, okay, rupa, your form, your body, okay? Anything that's, uh, you know, is, is form, uh, plus your feeling, plus your sensation, plus your perceptions that's your memory plus your mental formation we call it the story and finally your consciousness these five aggregates huh? once we couple them up together we begin to create small little dream in our daily life okay such like all the happenings and the events that carry a story in life so somebody scolded me, I'm so unhappy because he actually, that they do this, you know, so I rebutted him. You know, all these stories uh, are all from 
started off from your subconscious with the four seeds making things so real and then plus our senses and our five aggregates are wow 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 all the stories start coming into our life and things become so so real because of emotions we have feelings we have emotions you know so things become very real and we forgot actually all this is only a computer virtual reality we forgot we are so into the story so juicy so emotional you know but this is a virtual game you know it's a virtual game of learning this game is not really only come here and play lah, but we learn from this virtual game okay so we must always uh, step back and reposition Chausan, we always say uh, Chausan. step back and reposition and remember nothing is so serious Okay, nothing is so-called real. No need to be so serious in life. Even though we face whatever challenges, you know, they are all test, test, you know, T-E-S-T-S, test. Okay. So like what Lanka Vatara Sutta was saying, with these uh, four seeds, you know, inside subconscious mind, plus our senses and our five aggregates, you know, so suddenly we become like, a human being, you know, we call ourselves a human being, a uh, somebody, okay, somebody, somebody, your, 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 your existence, okay, and when these five aggregates becomes a human being, we attach to wrong view, there's an I, me, you know, there was me, there's an I there, and I attach to the realm of having my house, my car, my loved ones, you know, my properties, my status, my recognition, how people look at me, you know, things start. Okay. Now the Buddha tell you actually all started because it was only a virtual thing. Okay. Then the cycle of rebirth, because I like reading my attach. So once you attach the cycle of rebirth in the same six realms, uh, that's why we cannot come up from the wheel of karma. Okay, because of the having, the attachment, we do a lot of wrong things also. So the karma retribution will not allow us to jump out of this samsara. Okay, so this is what the Buddha said inside Lanka Vattara Sutta about existence. So let's look at what Platform Sutta said, right? This is what Hui Neng was saying. He said, uh, inside Platform Sutta, he said, oh, how our Buddha nature, actually our subconscious mind, we call it the Zhang Si, Zhang si that means your ninth consciousness, uh, could manifest all phenomena. We are very good, no? we are creator in you know, ourselves. We are the creator of our reality. Okay, you make real. You know, that means what? Give us one clue. What kind of reality you want to make real? A positive one or a negative one? You choose. That's what emptiness is all about. Kong Sing, Hong Sing is all about. How you want to see things. Whatever way you like. Because you are a master creator. Using all phenomena. Phenomena. Okay. So exactly like a virtual computer game, we lock on to the internet game, right? We start to play the game we call life. You are a virtual character only, you know, okay? We may lose and exit. That means uh, we die, game over. The moment when we die, uh, game over, uh, finish, okay? But where is the real player? The real player is behind. When you play the computer, so your game over already, what? But your player die, you know? The character, the, the character inside the virtual game died. However, the real player behind will never, never die. Your consciousness will never, never die. Only the body dies. Okay? The real player behind is our consciousness that create our world of reality. Okay? Even more scarier, 
more scary, even more scary, uh, is actually, uh, you know what, actually we never come out, you know, we are inside this consciousness uh, and everything outside is, we don't even have distance, you know, we don't even have time. Everything is happening uh, within the consciousness, very much like a computer game. When we play the computer game, wow, you go to the mountain, you hunt the monster, you play, you know, you, you play Mario, you play whatever game, la, you like fly everywhere, you know. It's, it's just that human be- human life, you know. Then after that, actually, uh, you are sitting, you are only seated on the chair in front of a computer, that's all. So, the four seats are very much like our virtual specs you know the specs when you wear when you want to play that computer game with the virtual game so you wear a spec that one is like your four seats allow you to see things so real okay and our five senses are uh, our mouth ear everything five senses are uh, is like our keyboard and our joystick correct you know? when you play the game uh, you need your joystick uh, those days are uh, my time or maybe now you use keyboard they are your five senses reacting uh? Okay, so we are in a giant virtual computer game called life. And this entire thing is for us to learn something. Okay, so within this dream, this universe, okay, the, after the Big Bang comes in, everything out of, no, out of nothing, uh, created out of nothing, there are laws governing the universe, right? Sometimes we call them the law of nature. Okay? Law of nature. So within this computer game, it's just like you play Monopoly or you play Mahjong or you play any computer game. There are rules. Correct? No? Because the game, you must follow a rule that in order for you to play with others. Right? So these rules are called the law of nature in this game called life. Okay? So we have law of cause and effect that govern the universe, govern the nature, called nature. Nature sounds very organic, but actually now it's, it's a created universe. Then we have law of impermanence, non-self and suffering. These are the laws that governs the universe or existence. Okay, Law of duality or relativity. Okay, this uh, duality means that uh, you have high, low, you have long, short, you have right, wrong, you have, uh, you know, all these are relative. Lah, okay, because of duality, then only you got existence and it's relative. However high and however low uh, is actually the same distance. Uh. This is called yi ta hei shang, uh, inside the lung, inside kai samatin, decoding the deepest secret sutta, relativity. And also we have law like law of reality. Yeah? Remember, all is mine. You only make real by virtue of a force. Okay. And of course, coupled with other laws like law of physics, you know, law of quantum entanglement, which tells us that uh, actually time and space is irrelevant. They are not real as well. Okay. And this law of uh, quantum entanglement actually is a very deep subject. And it is actually stems from one truth that all is one and one is all. We are all the same. We are all from the source, from the Buddha nature. Okay, so this is another very big concept. And then law of attraction. Law of, uh, there is the general general relativity law uh, theory by Einstein, the E is called MC squared, which is governing the big law of the universe, like law of gravity, you know. And Opposing to another law is the quantum mechanics. They talk about the small little uh, particles until, until to the wave function. So all these are law of physics, okay? And etc. there's so many other laws, you know. Actually, we should, you know, summarize everything uh, and, you know, put it into a talk, you know, on all this law. You, we have to know all this law. Why? Because when we play this game uh, of this game of life, okay, called life, lah, you can become a winner or a loser. No? Because it's a game. Okay? So, you become a winner if you know the rule of the game. 
If you do not know there is karma, you sure lose one. If you do not know there is impermanence and non-self, you sure suffer one. Because these are the rules of the game. And you always break the rules, then sure you suffer. Then you go to, you become a loser. And once you become a loser, you go down to hell. You become ghost. You become animal. But if you are a winner, ha, huh, great. Then you become deva. You become human. You know? So these are the, 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 the what do you call that? These are the parameters or characteristics installed into this game called law of nature. Or uh, don't you use nature? Nature always gives us an image uh, that this is organic, this is you know planned, but uh, this is uh, by chance. But actually, uh, this is a simulated universe, a created universe. Okay. So, so your sixth realm of existence uh, is the result of your game, how you play this game. Okay. It's very much like, you know, talking about our body, you know, we come into this samsara, just like diving, you go to an ocean. Okay. It's just like we are coming into samsara. It's another ocean of samsara. Okay. The sea is the samsara, the ocean. And our body uh, is what, when you go into samsara, you need a body, a vehicle, so that you can breathe inside this samsara. You can exist here, right? So goes the same with a diver. He needs to wear on a diving suit with the snorkeling mask, you know, and oxygen tank. So go down into the ocean. And when he dives, he see all the scenic ocean environment. This is the beauty of the samsara. And you may start to get attached. Maybe you met with a very beautiful mermaid. Okay, so you fall in love with the mermaid. So die lah, attach. Okay, so, but when the oxygen tank is about to finish empty, okay, your, your, our life will end. Okay, so we have to leave. Got to chow from the ocean, leave. So when you get up from the ocean, what do you do? You take off all your driving apparels, uh, the diving apparels. Okay, just like how we leave our body behind when we die. But that person uh, die or not? No, your consciousness don't die. It's only you're taking off your shirt, your, your, your diving suit, and then you throw it aside. That's your body. That's all. It's only a vehicle, right? However, this ocean, uh, this samsara thing uh, is always there for us to revisit. You can revisit and go back because this is a dreamland. It is an ocean always there for you. You want to dream? Go inside. You want to wake up? Get up. Get out and never go back anymore. But if you wish to go back, no problem. Lah. Okay? So today, you can use a virtual computer game. Or last time, we don't have virtual computer game. We talk about the ocean. Okay? So it's the same. If you want to log on to your computer game, you need all the gadgets. These are your bodies. And you start to play with the joystick, you know, with your, 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 your computer's specs, you know. So it's very good simile. This is easier to explain after our consciousness has rise so high with the coming in of computers uh, and technology. With this era, actually explaining uh, what is the truth, the truth of the secret, the, the secret, explain this secret of universe is much easier. I really don't know how you can explain this uh, without, without uh, what happened today. You know, like, you know, maybe 100 years back or maybe during the Buddha's time, that's why the sutta, they, they try to explain a computer concept to uh, 2,000 years, 2,500 years ago. Uh, people, to the people in 2,500 years ago, it's really not easy. Okay, so this is what one of a very famous Fasi, I forgot what is his name. Uh, he said this, you know, there were certainly six realms in the dream. But when one awakens, there isn't even a trace. You know, how ironical. 
so uh, so real, so real, so real. But once you wake up, you realize uh, actually nothing is there. Okay? The whole samsara is a dream. That's why the Chinese say, what I know, Ren Shen Wu Meng. Ah, Ren Shen Wu Meng got songs and more. Okay? <laughs> Everything uh, is an illusion that has no inherent existence. No an inherent. Uh, that means this existence will not go away. When. It's only a dream, a spark. Okay, there are only stories depending and depending on cause and effect. That's all, karma, and and then that uh, actually produce a story. That's all. Why he's like that? Today is like that, like that. Because of this is like that. Because of that is like that. Because of that is like that. So there are strings of stories put together only, made into an event. Okay, and the 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 most real part of the whole thing uh, is the perception, how you perceive it. Perceive what happened, that's all. That happening, uh, no inherent existence. Uh, it, it's not there, over already. Like whatever you got your hurt in the past, during your childhood, during whoever betrayed you, whatever. Uh, that one is only a happening and that's, that's it. No inherent existence. It's only we are the one who actually cannot let go. Okay, because that's what we perceive. The perception, then we got onto it, then we hold, hold it uh, and then become a memory and become a hurt. Actually, this is redundant, one, not necessary. Because what happened is only a, an event that is here to test you. That's all. See how you react. Yeah, you're so hurt. Uh. That means uh, you still have a lot of things to learn. If what happened uh, didn't hurt you much, uh, Great. Ah, yeah, this one passed already. La. No need to test him on this part. That's all. Okay? So, uh, we got to, don't be so serious, you know, about what happened, you know. Okay. Let's see what are the important Mahayana Sutta spoken by the Buddha about this existence. Right? So, we look at our famous Diamond Sutra. Okay? Kam Gong King. All that we achieve or perform are mere dreams and bubbles. Okay. They appear and disappear at lightning speed. You know, who scolded me? Who said something to me? Who ill treated me? Who abused me? Who betrayed me? They appear and disappear like lightning speed. Like whatever challenges we meet today, it will pass on. Okay? We should view all phenomena in such a manner. This is the advice by the Buddha at the end of the Diamond Sutta. He said, I only want to conclude this thing to you. Okay? So everything is only dreams and bubbles. What about Heart Sutra? Heart Sutra, the Buddha said, the Buddha was talking to Sariputta. He said, Kuan Yin Pusa, Kuan Yin, Kuan Zizai Pusa. Kuan Yin Pusa, while meditating on Panya Paramita meditation, when he was doing this meditation, which is very, very, very high level already, huh? realized all the five aggregates were empty, including your consciousness, also not real. No, my goodness. Okay, empty, which with such realization, one can free oneself from all sufferings. To each no more suffering because you saw the emptiness of it. You saw everything is only a dream. This game is called life. Uh, is only here for us to learn and grow. That's all. Okay? Sariputta. Form is not other than emptiness. And emptiness is not other than form. Okay? So, is kong, kong is so. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Correct, but you just now, like what the scientists were saying, they use double slit experiments. They realize that uh, things, okay, form is emptiness. When you look at something from molecule, atom, then all the proton, photon, and then go into quark, and then near, now nearing to string, string theory that spells out that everything is only wave function. So, form is emptiness. Emptiness is also form. Why? Because uh, from double slit experiment, remember, 
as long as you pay a virtue, you give a virtue of uh, force, uh, by a virtue of a force, uh, okay, the, 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 the way function uh, suddenly becomes solidified. That's why you can manifest things on, you know, in other dimensions. You, you, inside, uh, I think Christians, the Bible, the Jesus uh, actually can manifest bread uh, non-stop for the people to eat. So is Buddha, the rice, uh, non-stop one. You take the rice uh, for a few thousand people, the rice bowl will never, never empty one. The rice, the puri, uh, the, the rice pot, uh, okay? And then uh, another one, it seems lately, uh, the modern type one uh, is Sai Baba. Sai Baba can also do this. They can manifest things in the air, you know, because emptiness is form. Form is emptiness. And so are our feeling. You talk about physical things, it's already empty. What more are your feeling, memory, mental objects, and even your consciousness, they are all empty. Empty means what, you know, it's not nothingness. Empty means that, uh, there is something there up to you to manipulate whatever you like, how you want to manifest, how you want to uh, manipulate. Okay, if you like to see all the bad things, uh, all the fear, uh, all the fear mongering, uh, all the bad things, uh, you know, go ahead. Okay, no problem. It becomes very real. One. But if you like to look at love and hope, you know, and you know, all the uh, good things, uh, then your life becomes much better. Okay, whenever there's something happen, anybody can view that thing from few angles. That's why it's emptiness. You can view from here, you can view from here, the other direction, the other direction. Or come up with different solutions or different outcome. It can be very happy or it can be something wise, very wise, you learn something out of it. Rather than you look at it and you, you, you become very... Uh, you know, you very, very attached and you just feel, how come this thing happened to me? You know, why like that? You know, you complain, you judge, you, you curse, you know. You, you can, no problem. They allow you because universe is free will. It's really up to you. Okay? Then you make all the suffering become very real. Okay? So let's look at what Manjustri said in Surangama. Manjushri, one of the Maha Bodhisattvas. He's actually a teacher of all the seven Buddhas. Okay? When one attains the highest purity and quietude, okay, very quiet when you are in a meditation, uh, the lights within become so bright and clear, illuminating the empty space. Okay? You can see from there. Observing the world with such a pure mind, you look at the world with this pure mind, uh, pure state of mind, uh, all the happenings in the world are like stories in the dreams. Okay? Matangi. Matangi is the mother of the, is the mother who asked the daughter to go and seduce Anandawan in Surangama. Okay? Matangi was the mother of the girl Ade, who tried to seduce Ananda in Surangama Sutta. He said, uh, this matangi, this type of lady, uh, whoever, uh, nobody can hold on to the image of a lady as she is only a fantasy in a dream. Okay, All the beautiful ladies, uh, whoever we are very attached to, uh, are all dreams. Just like the most skillful magician in the world, he could fabricate any men and women. Okay, really, you know, just like what? The Taisa thing, the Buddha, the, the Bodhisattva was saying, the, the teacher is the master magician. Okay, you can actually fabricate. Even though one uses all his six senses, one should withdraw decisively. Yu yi yakke chao. That means we use the chao san, the step back and reposition from all this storyline. You step back and re reposition, immediately you wake up from that incident, that happening. It's very effective one, okay? Then the senses will go back to stillness, suddenly become quietened. And thus, all images that make up the story become neutral. For example, you're very angry with your husband. Say, I'm a woman. Uh, let's say, I'm very angry with my husband because he said something very bad to me, okay? So, I got very angry. But if you suddenly step back and reposition, 
then you pull yourself out from that story, what he said, you know, how you reacted, what he did last time. You pull yourself out. Immediately, you go into samadhi, uh, stillness, and suddenly wisdom arises. Suddenly, uh, you saw this man called husband. is only a man, ascension being, and his mouth was, was moving. That's all. <laughs> So that's why you don't get sucked into the story. The story is the dream. Okay? Even when we meditate, you see, even one hand like that, uh, is made up of all the breaking point of a hand. You know? So when you're in highly, highly purified mind, uh, you can see everything uh, is chin How do you say? Uh, there actually is a string only. A string of event uh, make your emotion comes up. You know, get out of that string. That's it. Okay, then you work up. Okay. So conclusion now, Sutta, Buddha, you know, even the scientists say everything is only a dream, you know, and it's only a computer game, a virtual game. So ask yourself how you feel. I don't have audience here. If got audience, I sure ask them, put up your hand. Anybody feel very relieved? <laughs> I think most people will feel relieved, lah, but Peculiarly, some people feel very sad. You know, maybe they are very attached. They're very attached to their loved ones. So you tell them this is not real. Uh, huh? But like, just like my friend said, huh? could I say goodbye already? I said, hello. <laughs> we say goodbye. No, no goodbye. Lah. This one is not real. Ni, okay. So how can we get awakened from this dream? Okay. There are two ways. Right. Uh, Lanka Vatara Sutta actually the Buddha, the, the, the Buddha said, uh, the, the disciple asked the Buddha, Lord Buddha, how do sentient beings cease or eradicate their self-created mental proliferations? All the stories uh, inside us, uh, how do we do it? Okay, Both instantaneously or gradually. Huh. Two ways. Okay, You can do it. So the Buddha said, there are two ways. Number one, gradual. Okay, so how do you do it? Number one, gradual but not instantaneous. Okay, just like a type of fruit which ripes gradually, slowly. Okay, a sculptor sculpting various objects. You know, sculptor, you know, they, the, they do the sculpture. Slowly, they produce a nice piece. A mother, mother earth, our planet earth, grows and produces all things. So you got to wait for it to grow and write, okay? And people learning music, drawing, writing, and other forms of arts and skills, the Buddha said, okay? This is gradual. So this gradual way means what, you know? You learn gradually, starting from morality, good values, okay? Filial piety, kindness, uh, pol politeness, you know, like our teeth, you know, you, you know, you know, go back to teeth, you know, you be a good person, all this, yes, fine. Then after that, you take on to five precepts, okay, or 10 virtues, subsina, you know, um -gai, subsin, um -gai. then you do dana, you study karma, you understand karma, reincarnations, repentance, you know, all this you learn. Okay, slowly you improve and then evolve and then you learn tolerance, effort, how to deal with people, how to get along with people, you know, and be grateful, uh, be grateful, have a lot of gratitude, forgive others, you know, you learn all this unconditional love, you know, uh, so you evolve, okay, and then after that you go into chanting, you go into meditation, samadhi, listening to dharma, open up your view like today lah. Okay, we can do all this. Okay, then you arise with wisdom. Okay, slowly you gain your wisdom and finally you wait for a right moment, you open up your supramundane wisdom. This one is gradual. However, there is another, uh, this, this method uh, is exactly what San Sao, uh, San Sao, San Sao is who, no? He is the master disciple of the abbot during the master queen's time, okay? So he was the one who actually uh, created this poem 
when the master, when the abbot asked them to, you know, come up with a poem to represent what they learned. Okay, this Sun Zhao was saying this. Sun si po tai shu, sang yu ming gang ton. The body is like a body tree. Our mind is like a mirror on a pedestal. Si si kan fat sik, mat si ye chan ngoi. We must always rub and clean it so that it is free from dust. Correct, isn't it? We, our, we make sure we don't do this, don't do that. You know, we rub, 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 rub. So make sure we are always clean and the mirror is always shining. Yes, okay? This one is what Sun Sao was saying. Then the abbot, when he saw the poem, he said, very good, this is a good poem, okay? This, he asked the rest of the disciples, he said, you all should learn this because it will not lead us at least to hell at least uh, it will not lead us to hell or ghost realm. However, this is not for awakening. Okay? Then come the second method. Instantaneous. Gradual, not, not to say you cannot, but it takes a while. It takes a longer journey. Okay? Then we come to the second method called instantaneous. Since the dream started spontaneously out of nothing, Okay, we can wake up also with an instance. Can. How it comes, how it goes. Okay, but here we need higher consciousness. Higher consciousness, just like people now. People today can do this because of the era of technology. We have higher consciousness now. Compared to people last time, we are so much faster, so much smarter as so. well. You see? So, Actually, instantaneous really for people today, you know, so that you don't go slowly, slowly. Immediately, you can understand, you can wake up because now we are in a different era. You know, this is 2,500 years away from the Buddha's time already. Okay, so in, inside Lanka Vatara Sutta, the Buddha said, okay, the instantaneous way, yeah, he said, just like a mirror that can reflect all forms instantaneously and pristinely, not tainted by concept. Just like a mirror, pop, you can reflect, you can see everything. Okay? Just like the moon and the sun that shines and exposes all forms, discarding a mind that arises and makes real elusive mental habits that creates sufferings. Very fast. The moon and the sun is like you open uh, your switch in the room like that. Suddenly, everything brightens up. You see everything. Instantaneous. Okay? Maggie? Just like our ninth consciousness, the Buddha nature that can differentiate a mind that makes real. Okay? And how to reapply. Uh, this is very important. You can see a mind that makes real. No, actually, uh, my consciousness makes things real only. Actually, they are not real. Okay? And how to reapply uh, an awakened mind into a living life again. This part is what the scientists didn't learn. <laughs> they should learn from the Buddha. You know everything is not real. Then how do you live your life? Reapply an awakened mind into a living life again. Ah, uh, This is another skill. Okay? We come back. We don't fall into emptiness. We come back and live life, okay? With this awakened mind, okay? With this, one can eradicate concepts, traits, and characteristics and all the wrong views. Because you woke up, okay? So, uh, this method, uh, very fast, uh, instantaneous, uh, is exactly like what Queen after reply uh, to his master, uh, the master disciple of the abbot. So he saw actually, he saw the, 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 the poem. Then after that, he came up with his own poem. Okay? It sounds like that. Body is not a tree. Po tai pun mo shu, ming gang yik fei thon. Body is not a tree. Mirror does not have a pedestal. Nothing on. Actually, there's no body. Our body also don't have. There's no mind. There's no consciousness. Okay? Since there isn't anything originally, how could dust be collected anywhere? 
you know. So uh, this one is really instantaneous. Immediately you wake up uh, that you saw all these are merely concepts. Okay, this is very similar to our 5 PAT, what we uh, promote, that step back and reposition is actually the waking up, a uh, small, small awakening uh, at all times. Imagine you've got millions of step back and reposition, millions, okay? Then it will lead you to wake up from this dream, okay? So that's why a lot of times our 5 PAT, we don't really do things like very external, everything go back to the mind. So that our five skills are, are like, you know, step back, reposition, pairing, okay? Of me, looking, observe, investigate, you know, match, you know, all these are, vow and motto. Everything is inside the mind, that's all. You, we don't have rituals, we don't have things like, you know, do this, do that, nothing. Even repentance, we don't do it. Not to say we don't agree, we very agree with it, but we, we know that once you look inward, your repentance is an effect. It's automatic when we look inward, okay? So, finally, okay? You, 1040 already, okay? So, this instantaneous, uh, however, inside Shurangama, the Buddha said, wisdom and realization can be obtained instantaneously, very instantaneous. Thus, all Dharma doors or enlightenment are no longer needed. You don't have to use what method, what method, you know, because the moment you wake up means wake up. You just, you know, wake up, that's it. You don't need any method. One. It's actually a discipline only, okay? However, however, characters and habits cannot be removed instantaneously, but they are to be eradicated gradually. Okay? That's why we have vow and motto inside our 5 PAT. Vow and motto is to fight what, you know, fight our habit. You know, why, why step back and reposition so difficult to do? Because our habit always asks us to go back to the story. So you keep pulling yourself out, then it went inside again. And it keep pulling and it went inside again. It, uh, it's the number game. And this number game needs time. You keep doing, see who is stronger. You are stronger or your samsara is stronger. So you pull up, then go back, pull, go back, pull. See the number, number of times, okay? For a person who are very developed or even more developed one now, you know what happened? They, you ask them to go into the story, they need effort because they are always there already. You know, Mahabodhi Sato, they need effort uh, to go and listen to your juicy story, you know? But for us, uh, oh, so nice, tell, tell, tell. Mm, okay, la. then well, all the emotion comes up. You see, it's only a number, it's a, only a number game. It's not somebody is better, you know. Hey, you, we are also Mahabodhi Satwas, uh, we can, no problem. We are Buddha nature, as we learned last year before, right? We are Buddha nature. We already got the, the divine spark in us already. Okay? It's only whether we want to explore it or not. So finally, okay? Another five minutes, huh? okay? The benefits of instantaneous awakening. Very direct. Very speedy. Pop immediately. Discipline, samadhi, then wisdom. The moment when we pull ourselves out in an argument, okay, in all arguments, lah, you when you pull ourselves out, you immediately you saw your discipline is there, okay, kai lah, that's your precepts already, thing. Then you feel yourself uh, into samadhi because you are looking at everybody inside from, from your consciousness, okay, samadhi is there. Then with this, uh, it makes space for wisdom to come up. Very direct, very speedy. Okay? And then next, can be practiced at any time, anywhere. Okay? You don't need to go to a way place uh, to do chanting, do repentance, you know, do meditation. You can do it anytime. Even in a house, in a workplace, you know, especially now, uh, now the energy is quite dense uh, whereby a lot of family breakups is happening. A, a lot of family afflictions uh, is happening. But this is okay because this now this is the time for this energy to stir things up. 
So don't have to feel too sad because it's happening to every family. Okay. So now this is the best time. Huh? Then, then you can actually tell some, you can actually step back and reposition. Okay. And finally, directly seeing the results of one's practice means what? Means uh, I can see my result already because the moment when I step back and reposition, I don't get angry so terribly already. I'm not so emotional. So immediately, I feel lugger. I don't feel the suffering so bad. You know, at least 50% gone. Because the moment you do it, immediately you woke up from the story. Okay? But the story will pull us back huh? because this is our habit. You know, in the... And the, and the thing sucks, you know, you know, story sucks. We like to follow, we like to continue, okay? So that's why there are two, two ways, either gradual or instantaneous, which I feel people now uh, can accommodate with the instantaneous method because of our higher consciousness and we are smarter and faster now, okay? The problem is we need, uh, because of these are, uh, on the other hand, the disadvantage is we need more discipline. That's all. Okay. So, conclusion. Science is catching up with what the Buddha said 2,500 years ago. Now, they are only catching up. Okay. Because Buddha has that kind of psychic where most advanced technology cannot match. Okay. Our, you know, psychic is technology. Technology is psychic. Okay. I'm, the psychic I'm talking uh, is not the psychic that you go and do samatha, you get psychic power, not that type. Uh. Psychic is very natural when you're very purified. It is, we, the Mahayana call it sing choya. It's not santong, no. It's not psychic, you know. We call it the sing choya, the game of the saints, sing choya. The game is, a, is the realm of the saint, saint. You know, saying it is very automatic to them. Okay, this kind of psychic is very good because it's automatic. It's not ego. No ego in there because once you collapse your ego, your outcome is what psychic power. And this guy psychic power is real original psychic power. Nobody can take away one. You use samata. Do you know that you know you can be taken away because it's not you. You were actually trying to get it because of your ego. And that one can be very dangerous. That's why a lot of uh, religion, they, they, they ask everybody don't go after psychic, which is very true. But if a person who develop very highly already, psychic power is a natural thing. We don't chase after it. Let it come out by itself because of your purified mind. Okay? So imagine a higher psychic and highest technology. Which one is higher at the peak? Peak, la, peak of psychic and peak, peak of a purified psychic uh, and the peak of technology, which is higher. Definitely technology cannot beat this purified psychic because it's your consciousness. Okay? So that's why the Buddha can see a lot of things, uh, even uh, extraterrestrials cannot see. You know, you don't talk about we human. No? Even the ET uh, cannot beat the, the, the Buddha. Okay, I would like to conclude everything by this phrase uh, this, this man was saying. Uh, he is a Chinese quantum physicist. Okay? Tian Zhong Guo Ke Xue Zi Su Da Xue. Okay? He is a uh, former headmaster for two uh, very high technology type of university. Uh, I don't know what is that. Nan Fang He Zhong Guo Ke Zi Ke Ke Xue. Okay? Zhu, Zhu Qing Shi Xian Zhen. Okay, this man, he is also a Chinese quantum physicist. He said in 2009, okay, he said, uh, modern quantum mechanics has reached Zen level. Chan, uh, Chan Jing, uh, Zen, Zen. Okay, they now equate uh, quantum mechanics with Zen. Okay, means our meditation. Uh, okay, and he concluded by saying uh, that, that, that talk, uh, he concluded by saying, all the scientists are trying so hard to climb the mountain to go to the top. Okay? However, when they reached the top, they saw a lot of master Buddhist, uh, Bud, master Buddhist, uh, master Buddhist, uh, a lot of uh, Buddhist masters, okay, are already, are already there waiting long time. 
See, the Buddhist masters are there waiting a long time because all they're trying to conclude and find out in science are actually spoken by the Buddha already. Okay, then he said, 不仅如此, he said, uh, after he understand Buddhism, and because he's a quantum physicist, ma, he said, his heart uh, 充满了敬畏和震撼, 震撼, uh, he, he only feel uh, in awe, awe, you know, awe, this awe, A-W-E. Uh. <gasps> okay, with what respect and amazement of what the Buddha said. He already said it until so tower, so deep compared to what the, try, the scientist is trying to reach, reach out today. Okay? Even Albert Einstein uh, said, if there is any religion that could cope with modern science, scientific needs, if there's any religion, uh, it would be Buddhism. Okay? So this is the conclusion. So our conclusion today is, remember, everything is not real. It's already spoken even by the scientists and also by the Buddha in all the suttas. Nothing is so real. We are only wave functions and we are in a virtual computer game. Remember, we come here for a test, test for learning and growth. That's all. Okay? Nothing, don't, don't be so attached by the results. You know, that I have to be rich, I cannot lose my property, I cannot, you know, lose my loved ones, you know. All these loved ones and all these, you know, status, money, wealth, uh, all these are part of the game, okay? And your loved ones are, are actually, later we can share our soul group, you know. They are, we are only soul group, we will meet each other, one, you know. You don't have to be worried, we lose them, you know. And uh, it, all these are actually much, much bigger picture than what we thought it was okay so now another 10 more minutes to go we can open for question so good uh, i can finish within one and a half hours <gasps> okay any question thank you sister carol okay. for this very enlightening talk here i i myself personally learned quite a lot of insights today uh, so, yes, and also thank you to all audience for staying tuned and uh, watching. We have received a few questions from the audience. So the first one, uh, let's start with the first one, uh, is by Brother Leong Yu Ming. So he has asked uh, for Sister Carol, mm -hmm. if you could explain more on emptiness. Emptiness, mm. okay. Emptiness is actually a uh, hong seng lah. Huh? Basically, uh, emptiness, uh, you tie back to quantum physics, there's only three characteristics of emptiness. Number one, it's not fixed. It's not fixed. Okay, anything can happen. It's not fixed. Mm -hmm. Number two, it depends on probabilities. How many times you draw that line here and how many times you draw that line there, that means probabilities. Huh? You know? Then number three, uh, it is actually full of infinite potential. Infinite potential. Okay, let me put into real life. Means what, you know, when you see something, okay, you want to make the thing real or not real, up to you. If you want to make a, a, a happening a reality, you just apply probability. Many times, you do like that. Many times, and then it becomes real. Because probability, ma, and then it's, it's, it's up to you to think. We call yam dim tai. If you want to see it this way, a positive way, then it becomes positive. You keep thinking like that. It becomes positive. It becomes real. And once it becomes real, it becomes infinite, you know, the potential. It can be so powerful. You know, on the other hand, if a negative one, same thing. You want to make it bad, it can be so bad. Bad until you go to hell. It's up to you. Only same incident, same thing. Up to you where you want to see. Remember these three characteristics. Up to you how you want to see it. We want to make it real through probabilities. And once you do it, decide it ready, the potential can be infinite. It's just like, okay, last time we were abused by parents. Say lah, somebody. Let's say I was abused by my, my father. How you want to see? 
up to you. Actually, this is a test. This is something happened only. Okay, if you want to think that, wow, good man, my father came here to train me to become very independent. And today I'm, I'm so independent, you know, emotionally and both financially because of my father. It becomes a good thing, you know. And from there, you become so hardworking and then you become so independent. Finally, you become so rich. The potential is infinite. On the other hand, the other guy said, I'm terrible. Lah. I got this kind of father. I never go to school, no. How? So uh, that's why I fail because of him. I think lah, like that. You think like that, negative. Then after that, I, because of that, lah, you know, I am, nobody loves me. You know, I'm a victim. No more self-empowerment. Everything because outside, uh, that's why I'm so big. Huh? Then after that, for fin infinite potential, this person will become a drug addict, become a robber. You know, because I feel life is unfair to me. Ma. Up to you. That's why you see one father, one lousy father can produce different siblings, got different, different uh, outcome. You see? So this is the the, the way we explain uh, emptiness. La. Emptiness is what four words la, I always say Cantonese. La, yam dim taya, how you want to see something happen. Up to you. Nothing is totally good. Nothing is totally bad. One. Nothing. Up to you how you want to see. You look at something you put up on the social media. La. You just put one comment. You see, good one. People, you know, still gas up you and you know, even the Buddha, some people say he's no good one. You see? So, it's how you want to see things. Only. Oh, so, this is intense. Yeah. Okay. I hope I answer him. Lah. Okay. Uh, Thank next. you, Carol. Mm -hmm. That's why um, when you were sharing about that, I couldn't help but also think about the Heart Sutra. Because we, Heart Sutra mm -hmm. is about how emptiness is none other than form. Form is none other than emptiness. So, when we come to a place of emptiness, there is that choice to create um, your own reality. What we want to create, yes. Yes, our own, our own reality. reality. Up mm. to you. Ah. Yeah. So it's everything it. is self-empowerment. Mm. Yourself. How you want to be responsible to your own happiness. That's all. Mm. Yeah. And emptiness allows that. Mm. And okay. it's very empowering to hear um, that, you know, we have a choice to be our own victim of the circumstances or we can choose to become the hero in our circumstances. How yes, you are very right. Yeah, mm. correct, correct, correct. Huh? All young people must know this, you know, seriously. Huh? Yeah. Then, like, until all the habit very bad already, <laughs> they only realize it's like, not to say cannot, but you need harder because again, it's number game. Number game. Mm. Uh, but once an older person with hard habit that can come out from it, then he becomes even more powerful than the normal people who has lesser habit. You know? So, okay. Any question? One question only. Yes, we have uh, actually... We have about four more questions, you know, uh, Sister oh. Carol. But I'm also very aware of the time. Uh, it's almost 11 a.m. Would you be okay if we extend okay. it for another maybe 15, 20 minutes? Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, can, can, can. Okay. So we'll move to the second question. And the second question is, when, when, is there, when there is non-self, where lies emptiness? When there is non-self, where lies emptiness? Uh, mm. This one will be good if you can give me an example. When there is non-self, things we cannot control. Where is emptiness? Mm. Okay. Emptiness, it's a state of mind. Okay. How you want to see it. A lot of times, it's really non-self one. Things not within your control. For example, you want to control your wife. You want to control your children. Non-self cannot. They won't listen to us. Or we want things this way, that way, you know. So now the next thing, because of emptiness, very good. I can see things differently. For example, my children went against me. Okay. Don't want to study hard. Okay. I have this mind thinking that if they don't study hard, next time cannot, you know, survive. Cannot chari makan or whatever. Okay. So this is the usual thing of parents. Because non-self really must say how? How can I do anything because I cannot control them? Okay, so now I will apply emptiness because I know whatever it is, uh, is really up to me how I want to see this situation. Okay, because 
then all the good and the bad uh, you want to, how you want to create. If you keep harping on a uh, die, uh, I want to control him, he or else uh, he cannot survive. He will not, he will not be, he will be bullied by a lot of people. You know, all these are uh, uh, then you went into the negative side of the emptiness. On the other hand, I see, I know, again, uh, we have to apply some rules. Uh, again, I, I try to talk to him, okay? Talk only, I don't force, okay? Because I know everything can be good, can be bad. I talk to him, but he refused. He just refused to take my advice and don't want to study. Fine. Then my emptiness come in in the positive side is, I know everything is determined by your merits, your karma, okay? And I, again, you, you, you listen to some of the this we know, uh, a lot of times your this destination, your des, des, destiny, uh, your destiny is predetermined by your own merits. It's not how much you study, you know? I can see a lot of people study very hard and become very well in their, uh, in their results. However, they are just mediocre in life. I also see a lot of people never study but do so well in life, you know? So this is something positive I see. So I will allow him to be who he is. Because I already told him, it's not that I never care. Even if I care so much, I try to, you know, force him. That means I do not agree with non-self. You know, I just, I want to control him. But that's not the way because I know this will actually jeopardize our relationship. Okay, so you apply non-self and uh, in this emptiness uh, very dynamically, you know. So how you want to play and manipulate so that everything is harmonious and also uh, we do not impose a lot of wrong view. Even, I, even as parents also, we have wrong views, you see. Because a lot of times why we intervene because of our past hurt our insecurity, our inferiority complex. So we impose onto our next generation because we, we are in the dream. We are very, very hurt by what happened. So we don't want this thing to happen to them. So we intervene. So when we know a little bit more of the wisdom and what is the actual uh, reality of the universe, uh, we start to let go. So this one will help us uh, in the way we see things. So from the positive side or the negative side. Nobody there to say your, 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 your child uh, is going to be successful or uh, not successful. Nobody there to say because everything is still emptiness. See how this child flourishes uh, also depends on his karma. Like that. Uh. So, uh, but now it, I think this is what he's trying to ask. Uh, Non-self and imp uh, this, uh, they, they, they are correlating. Uh. They, don't, they don't conflict, correlating. Okay, non-self and emptiness. Non-self and emptiness. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I yeah. try to apply it into life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was a very good example. I think it, it's very practical. Also, so mm, very easy practical to understand yeah, rather yeah, than just yeah, in conceptual yeah. terms. Uh. correct. Or yeah. else you never get anything from Buddhism. Right? Like we yeah. say, like, don't put in the shelf. Put into our life. Okay. Mm, yeah. Thank you for that. Uh. Yeah, uh, also what I what I heard was uh, it was very important because um it's about like being aware of the stories that we are creating in our mind, isn't it? Uh, as even as parents, as parents or children, like being aware of that story, where where it comes from. You mentioned like past hurt, past experiences, mm. um, and also our judgment about the person that mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's creating these emotions, the need to control where it's coming from. That's I think that's also um, part of the process of uh, un uh, coming from emptiness and non-self. Mm. Huh? You, you can listen to this, this like the purple one. A lot we talk about this. Huh? Mm. Under the chapter of uh, Sayonara Fear, I think. Too worried. Mm. Uh. But I don't know whether this person is asking about this kind of uh, situation. Okay. Yeah, okay, next. Okay, we'll move to the next question. Uh -huh. The next question is by Sister Lai One Thing. Mm -hmm. uh, question is, kindly explain higher consciousness. How different is it from consciousness? Is it a manifestation of wisdom? Okay, you, you try step back and reposition. Once you step back and reposition, your consciousness is definitely higher. You see things from a higher plane. See things. 
you know, you get out from the uh, story. So you, you become higher in that sense. Lah. So that's why usually your higher consciousness is uh, uh, faster, smarter, and then you have more wisdom. Okay. So you, you want to talk about people today. I would say people today, uh, they got faster and uh, faster and smarter mind. Okay. But definitely may not be so clear because too much information and things are very fast. So if this person in today's era can step back and reposition, his, con his consciousness uh, is much higher than those days, people who are very simple, you know, very simple-minded because those days not so challenging life. Now things very challenging. The moment you can rise above, uh, you, your consciousness need to be higher already. You know, because of the training of what happened in life today, uh, the moment you step back and reposition, you are your you are 20 times faster than people last time. You know, especially I'm talking about the seekers uh, who wants to seek and who really wants the spirituality. You know, so like those days, last time the people are more pure, more uh more simple, you know, they, 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 they don't really need so much of step back and reposition. Uh, but today, you really need to do this. Uh, once you do like that, uh, suddenly wake up from the dream, uh, your consciousness is definitely higher. Okay, so this is higher consciousness. Uh, okay, higher. Usually, uh, I would say uh, people who are in spirituality today, usually the consciousness is much higher compared to those days. Lah, you know? Uh, but of course, you either make it or break it. A lot of people cannot do it. But once you can do it, you fly. You know? Actually, now is the best time to cultivate because mm -hmm. of the density, you know? And yet, you still have spirituality now. You know? So, like that. Lah. Nice. Stepping back and also observing the process of, of what is happening. Ah, stepping back and repositioning is mm -hmm. like a, um, it, this is a, actually, this is very much like awareness, but it's just it's more dynamic. Um, uh, I'll give example. Maybe some of these people, they new people, uh, they never heard of the this. It's just like I always like to use uh, you go out for a dinner, you know, together with your family, supposed to have a, you know, uh, good good gathering lah, for example then after that there, there's your there's your purpose of going out to have fun and have dinner then suddenly your husband suddenly said something uh, very irritating you know so you got very angry then you started to show black face and then he also showed black face and then the children all kept quiet then suddenly you step back and reposition hey what am I doing uh? you know my purpose is to have good times why am i using ego to stop everything so suddenly you saw hey this is not my chow chong we call my initial intention so i let go so i let go and then i go back to my original mode whereby i take things slightly then suddenly uh, the atmosphere because your vibration very important then suddenly the atmosphere become loosened up now uh, then what you want step back and reposition immediately you, you saw you are inside the story of struggle. Mm. Then you wake up. Mm. Once you wake up, you immediately with wisdom, you know how to rectify. Mm. You me, no? uh, so this is the how you do it in daily life. La. There's so many situations in yeah. office, you know, at home, uh, all this. La. So you can apply your stepping back and reposition. And me, an, another lady from SABS shared with me, she said the, she was very angry because the husband keep grumbling, lah, complaining, lah, you know. So she also got very, very dragged into it. But one day after she learned this step and position, she, she, she told me, she came and told me personally, she said, oh, I was so happy, you know. Now, oh, the moment when he got angry, I immediately SBR, step back reposition. Mm -hmm. I look at him, oh, suddenly, you know what she saw or not? She said oh, she got compassion. Mm -hmm. She felt very sorry for her husband because of what happened to his past. Wow, you see, the wisdom can arise until you can forgive him. Until you say, uh, you, 
why he's so grumpy, uh? why he's so cannot let go of things. Uh? Because what happened to him in the past, within the conversation, immediately all this wisdom comes out in her. No? Why? Because got samadhi. Ma. Kai teng wai a teng ya. Sure one. Once you got discipline, you go into samadhi. The moment you have samadhi, wisdom will come up. Because we are Buddha nature by nature. We are a divine spark. All these wisdom want to gush out. As long as you give them way, you open up space for your wisdom to rise. It's just that because we are very clouded with ego, you see. So after that, uh, that means she, she, she got it. Uh, you know? So imagine you do SBR, step back and reposition, millions of times in your life. I can guarantee you, you sure wake up one. Okay. Uh, keep practicing. And, yeah, keep practicing. Keep practicing. Yes, 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 yes. Step back, Remember, you know, don't be sucked into the story. And then uh, the worst thing is because our ego loves story. Mm, See? Yes. So the moment you drop the story means that uh, you're reducing the ego. Mm. How beautiful. Everything at the same time. Huh? Yeah, uh, it's a very okay. powerful process, actually. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Very, very powerful. You can mm. save relationships and nurture, you know, our relationships. At least uh, reduce our suffering first. Yeah, yeah. Reduce my suffering first, lah. At least I don't get so angry, so involved, you know. And then everything is only a virtual game of life mm-hmm. for the purpose of soul growth and learning. That's all, you know. Mm. Uh, okay. Beautiful. Thank mm. you. Okay. Ah, we'll no. Move to the next question, ah. Okay. Okay. So next question: How to effectively look or break through the illusion while we are aware? feel like easily drop back into the world of illusions? Hmm. Oh, John, the answer is definitely the first thing you need to do is step back and reposition first. Hmm. Because we are very easily stuck in. Hmm. So you take, get the, get the uh, momentum of stepping back first. You know, you get the momentum of step, uh, stepping back. Hmm. And then once the momentum is there, you can, you, you feel easier to juggle in your life you must get the habit of doing it first. Okay? You can vow and motto on a step back and reposition. Remember, keep telling yourself, out, out, out. It's an effort. But do you know that stepping back and reposition, a lot of goodness one. You know, number one, you can practice anywhere like what we say. It's very fast and then you see a lot of wisdom. Number three, you reduce the suffering. And the best part is what I know, which I never write inside there because it's not the benefit of step back and reposition. Another part is what, you know, when you do a lot of step back and reposition, your karmic debt, yip cheong, start falling. Because you're waking up, you can delete your karmic, your karma, you know, back karma, you can delete, you know, because stepping back and reposition, very powerful. So, however, a lot of people share with me when they started to do step and reposition, it's even harder. You know why? The moment you start to erase the, the karmic debt, more gush out. It's like that one. Because this is the journey. So you, because the last time you never activate the karmic debt. Uh, so now the moment you step back and reposition, they come up uh, and allow you to uh, clean even faster. With this era now, with this era now, uh, uh, starting from year 2, 2020, I would say, la, because of what happened to the environment now, because of the gamma ray coming in, okay? Mm-hmm. The karmic debt la, is deleted la, eight times faster. Now, but gushing out even more because of this, we call it, you know, a, a, a golden age coming. La, okay? So eight times faster. You know? Wow, now it's bonus discount. <laughs> the best time uh, yeah. to practice. <laughs> this is a good time for spirituality, mm. not time for accumulation of wealth. You know, if you can survive, if you have enough, this is the time you got to let go. Go for your spiritual cultivation. And unless you say, oh, you, I cannot, uh, I cannot survive because I still need to eat, send children to school, pay my housing rent. Uh, that one, sorry, a bit, uh. But if those people already Okay, Anna. let go of things, let go of your work that is giving you a lot of turmoil. Let go, you know, because this is the time for spirituality, not for accumulation of wealth, especially 2020 onwards. 
Mm, time to look focus on the inner inner success inner quality of life as, as opposed to the external mm, uh, yeah. realities as we, as we call it inward inward walking mm. Mm, this is the best time uh, mm. and also say uh, this is a good time mm. Mm. And just like how you uh, also cited the Shurangama Sutra earlier on right the uh, that characters and habits cannot be removed instantaneously but they can be mm-hmm. eradicated gradually so by practicing patiently and mm. um, diligently with discipline uh, over time. Mm. Mm. Then there's also the... Oh, sorry. You know, no, 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 no. It's, it's very good. You do it. You are doing a good uh, summary. Yeah, yeah. Because not only that, you know, while stepping back and reposition, you know it's difficult because you've got to do, remember. You know, that's why you use vow and motto to remember. And it is an effort because it's a discipline. But by doing that, uh, do you know that how much debt you're paying off which you don't know, but all these are in the spirit realm. You're paying off a lot of debt because you're waking up, you're clearing your mind, you're purifying. It's like meditation, but you can do it anytime and somehow it is so real life. You know, you can actually salvage a lot of arguments, a lot of, you know, discontentment, a lot of, you know, this kind of struggle with family members. So you're doing it all the time. Yeah. Mm. And reducing our own suffering also. Mm. What you mentioned. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we move to the next question. Yeah, we have uh actually yeah uh, we have quite a few more questions. You know, uh, Sister Carol, we have five more questions. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh? We try to. We try to. Okay. So uh, eh, where did it go? Ah, okay. So how do you? How are you able to step back and reposition? Is it driven by recalling the teaching of the sutta or your understanding and insights of your practice? We have been habitually attaching to all liking and disliking. Sister Lai, Lai one thing is asking. The question was, how do you want? How, how, you I, how are we able to step back and reposition? Oh. Is, is this uh, stepping back and repositioning driven by uh, recalling the teaching of the sutta mm. or our understanding and insights of practice, of our practice? Okay. Mm. Um, step back and repositioning is only a discipline is an effort okay it's an effort you just step back okay immediately you see things very differently because it is backed by all the wisdom behind really of course stepping back and repositioning is only the starting starting journey okay once you step back and you've got a clearer mind you have got to back it up with a good what do you call that wisdom in life. That's why after stepping back and reposition, we have this thing called tearing. Immediately, you tear the situation into two. One is your ego. Another one is issue of life. Okay? So, the ego part is the one interesting you have to address. Issue, you have to apply wisdom how to solve this problem. Okay? Because things can become more complicated, not by just going out to eat and then show black face, not so simple as that. you got things like fighting for inheritance, betrayal, you know, cheat my money, cheat my love, you know, all these are a lot of very terrible issues involved. So what you need to do is that you step back and reposition. Then after that, you tear that issue into two. One is issue of life, whereby wisdom will help. Just, just normal mundane wisdom will help because getting life moving on. Another one, the ego part, we have to look inside and drill. Drill inside so that in future, so that is, this is to eradicate our perceptions about things, okay? So that in future, this kind of event happen again, uh, I will not be caught. This is called true liberation, you know? Not, okay, I solve this problem now, then next time, come again. Are you? I'm not liberated, right? So in order to be liberated, we have to go back to the root until we found out there is a perception, you know, that I've been holding on. Not only Miss A will cause me like that. Next time, Mr. B, Miss C, whoever lah, will actually trigger me the same thing. Man. But that one, you have not been healed. You are not liberated. So you have to do something more behind. But the first thing first, you must know how to step back and reposition. That is the foundation uh, of your practice. There's the foundation. Because once you step back and reposition, the next thing, you saw your mind, you saw your consciousness. This is called starting to walk inward. You are turning your 
you are turning your okay. attention mm-hmm. inward. Turning only, then go inside. Oh, a lot of secret inside, mm-hmm. a lot of jewels inside. Mm-hmm. Okay, rather than keep solving all the problem, we already been solving problem our whole life. What right? are we happier? Mm-hmm. No, because we are not liberated. We been. Do you know that we are solving all the same problem all the time? Same mm-hmm. one, the problem. Mm-hmm. Because we never look for the solution to eradicate so that we are liberated. Yeah. You know, because, because we never go back to the root. Oh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this one is a, is a, is a journey. Lah. Slowly, slowly. But if the person who asks, ah, you ask her to listen to our this, there's actually tearing and tearing inside already. If, don't, you, if, you, if you don't have the this, no problem. You go on to YouTube. YouTube, you type 5 PAT. No space in between. Uh. You type 5 PAT. There are English, Mandarin, and Cantonese version. Okay? So the English version, all I done in SABS one. Ma. So we're very familiar already, right? So are uh, all there already. So as you can go and revise and listen to all these skills. We already actually... Uh, you know, spell out. However, those are all information, the way to do it, you know, but practical, practical is very important because after that, uh, you should meet with very funny, funny thoughts, you know, you know, skills or, or maybe certain blind spot, how to do it. Uh, that one, uh, we come in with practical. That's what we are doing here, uh, you know, in our place. So, let it uh, Next. Next question. Uh. Mm-hmm. If everything is not real, who is the giving Dharma? Who is giving the Dharma talk now? Okay. In the Mahayana Sutta, even the Buddha said, even in Diamond Sutta, you already see, uh, everywhere in Mahayana Sutta, the Buddha said, even words are not real. Mm-hmm. You don't talk about the person talking. But horse, you know, fat, but horse, you cannot even talk. Because there is duality already. Okay. However, there is a communication thing inside this dream to make to wake others up. Or else, how to deliver this? You see, the person who is talking, uh, let's say, say I am talking, uh, actually, you want to call me Carol, also can. But you, you don't want to call me Carol, also can. We are, you know, it, it's just like I'm dealing with Karine. I now I see you as Karine. Okay, I deal with you like normal because I know your traits, I know who you are, you know. But I can also treat you and love you like another sentient being only. You see? So you you play your game like 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 just now Manjustri was saying, you have to come back into life and then you play your game by knowing this is not real, but and yet you continue on to achieve certain noble, very noble uh uh, uh what do you call that? Noble conclusions. Ah. Like for example, I want to wake you up. What am I going to do? I cannot. I have to tell you. Ah, right? So after that, then we start to have communication. But you must know, this is still a dream. We have to wake up. The day you wake up, you woke up and I woke up, no words. The words is only the raft. R-A-F-T. Raft. Raft, you know raft? R-A-F-T. Uh, that cross the river. Cross the river. Uh, crack, crack, crack. So you need the raft to cross the river. But once you are over the, the, the shore, uh, over the shore, you will throw the raft away because you already woke up. So now, the person talking the Dharma and all the words used is actually the raft, including the Dharma. We cannot even attach to the Dharma. Okay? So once we woke up, even Dharma is not real. Mm. Anything of duality uh, is not real. You are in the dream. Mm. You see? So we have to go back to a place which actually we cannot comprehend one because we are in the dream so much. Okay? Unless you meditate, lah. you meditate, you go to a stage whereby your body all gone, everything gone, except only a, an existence. 
existence. Yes, no and when that existence, even that existence is no longer, you realize that you exist, and that is the place. Now. How to talk? <laughs> you cannot talk already. Uh, like that. Oh. Thank you, Sister Carol. So, Sister Carol, it's it's already 11.24 um, and we have another three to four questions, actually. Um, how sh- I'm just thinking, how shall we go about this? Maybe what we'll do is, uh, if you're okay with it, uh, perhaps we, we maybe we take one more question and then uh, and then we, we, we close already. 11.30 long. 11 30 uh, long. Yeah, because many people uh, may have some other things. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. okay, so I'll, I'll go to the next question. Hmm. The uh, very last one. Okay. Uh, if everything is not real, hmm. oh, this one we, we handled already. Okay, so ah, uh, this question. Is psyche equivalent to six cents? Oh, no. Seven and eight, uh, oh, this person must listen to this, this. There's six, seven, eight. Seven and eight, uh, six is our consciousness that actually allow us to uh, differentiate things, fun bit some, you know, that, you know, I'm sitting in a room now, I got aircon, uh, this is six consciousness, okay? Seven is your habit, your character, your tendency, okay? Eight is storage of all your karma, you know, and, and, and all your seeds, you know? Seven and eight uh, are actually subconscious, subconscious. The scientists, they will not recognize this one, one. Or even the word neurology la, or all this, la, all this la. the mainstream la, will not recognize seven and eight. But seven and eight is actually the subconscious side of a human being. Okay, so this person was asking, uh, what was the question? Uh? Is it the sub- is, is psychic? The psyche, uh, is it psychic, is it? P S Y C H E is the psychic. psyche. What is oh. psyche? Uh? It's not psychic, is it? Uh, psyche is related to psychic. Uh, let me just go the meaning. Oh. Uh. Really psyche can be emotional, you know. By... Uh, so psyche is like the human soul, the mind, or the spirit. Ah, oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, so that means the psyche, la, not the psychic, la, okay? Uh, uh, psyche? So the psyche equivalent to sixth sense. Hmm. Psyche is the emotional, the Spiritual six sense. Uh. Six sense is mm. not so much spiritual or not spiritual. It is just navigating life. Mm. It's for us to navigate life, you know. Our spiritual, uh, our spirit, uh, our soul level is actually at the eighth consciousness, soul. You know, if you want to talk about emotional, spiritual, that one uh, is actually your light, your light body, uh. Your light body is your uh, soul, okay? This soul. This soul thing uh, is not six consciousness already. It's definitely at your eight consciousness. Mm. Uh, I think he's asking like that. Mm. There's one thing, uh, no real life audience. Yeah, uh, maybe difficult to, to ask him. Uh, ask him uh, ask uh, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe they, she, he or she meant psychic also because you, you did talk about psychic ah, during your I talk, right? Uh, uh, psychic, psychic, psychic is not six sense. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It's not your six sense. Uh, six sense. Okay, his six sense is not the consciousness of six sense. Eh. That means the six consciousness is it. I think his six mm. sense is the intuition. Mm. It's mm. asking whether psychic is it intuition. Mm. Can. It depends. They are clairvoyants. Clear audience, clear sension, you know. So it depends. Clairvoyance is seeing. Mm. Uh, clear audience is hearing. Mm. Clear sension is knowing. Just mm. knowing. Don't know why you just know. Uh, that one is your intuition. Nah? Uh, that one is your psychic. Nah? Mm. You know, so it depends on uh, what he's talking about. If say if you want to talk about psychic, nah, uh, that one six consciousness. It's not six. Uh, I think he's talking about six cents. Uh. Mm-hmm. Your, your six cents, you know, you know something is coming, something is coming. Uh, like that. Uh, uh, that one. That one is your clear ascension. Yeah, that one is six cents. Mm-hmm. Intuition. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Lisa Carol. You're welcome. It's been such an informative and very, very insightful 
uh, session. We learn about the secrets of the law, the universe, the secrets of nature, the laws of the uni, uh, the laws of uh, the universe and nature. And then you even uh, drew upon like um, quantum physics principles. Mm. You shared about Nick Bostrom uh, mm. simulation hypothesis about how we, we may actually be living in a virtual game. This is a game of life and we can be masters, cre master creators if we understand the laws of nature and mm. quantum physics and, and, and all that. Mm. Yeah, you also shared about Stephen Hawking's um, principles and then you, you took us through the four main seats of material uh, e material events, is it? In, in our consciousness. The four seats inside our subconscious yes. mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, inside our subconscious mind that make us think that or perceive our experience in this world as very real. Mm. Huh? Um, so there's the seat of Actually, liquidity. To, to be very precise, uh, you mm. never leave your consciousness. Uh, there's no space. Uh. You mm. are actually, okay, let's say if from here you walk to your kitchen, you thought you're walking to your kitchen. There's no such thing, you know. You are actually still on your desk, not here, lah, in your consciousness, in your original consciousness. Just like playing a computer game. Inside there, you walk anywhere, you fly everywhere, you go to other universes, other planets, but you're still sitting on that chair. It's the same with us. We are actually, uh, we thought we, uh, 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 we, 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 we put our hand out, we thought we stood up, we walked. All these are actually inside the virtual game. It's inside your consciousness only. Mm. Scary, uh, because time and space uh, is virtual. Albert Einstein already proven this. Okay? Uh, okay, sorry, sorry. This <laughs> <definitely>. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great that you're clarifying because I'm doing a, a, a quick short uh, short uh -huh. summary and wrap up. So as yes, and when, just jump in. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. You come to this topic, uh, I think uh, 10 hours is also not enough. Uh, yeah, there's uh, so okay. much to explore, uh, yes, so much to dive yes, into. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, no. yeah, no. So you also shared about the uh, Lanka Vatara Sutras and our five aggregates of human being and mm. the laws governing the universe, cause and effect, impermanence, non-self, suffering. We talked about duality and the law of re relativity. A lot of things we talked about today, actually. Mm. So valuable. Huh? Oh, bad, uh, you can remember. Uh. <laughs> I was paying attention. <laughs> yeah. And then also Sister Carol took us through the Diamond Sutra, Heart Sutra, the Shurangama Sutra. And um, all of this, I learned that um, all oh, 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 there is some common uh, features where what, uh, uh, what we are living, what we achieve or perform are dreams and bubbles. They are actually like... Um, uh, what you call it, stories in the dreams. We're experiencing stories and creating stories in our mind in the dream. And these temptations are merely fantasies. Mm -hmm. And a, a skillful magician can fabricate any men and women. This was in the Surang, Shurangama Sutra. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, so me, what I've learned is, yeah, la, we, can, we can be creators. Mm. Yeah. And our thoughts can create realities and our emotions, uh, what I learned, our emotions are like feedback and opportunity for us to learn about ourselves. As uh, Sister Carol talked about the hurt, whenever we feel hurt by a situation, that is actually a point where we realize, oh, there is something here that is still triggering me. Huh, what is this? Where is this coming from? Huh? Uh, so step back and reposition, very powerful tool uh, for us to practice, to uh, awaken from these dreams. So yes, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and, 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 and watching this really empowering talk. Uh, Sister Carol, before we come to a close, uh, may I invite you to uh, guide us through uh, the, the sharing of merits? Ah, sure, sure, sure. Ah, sure. Share screen. Uh. I share screen. Uh. Okay. okay, okay. Okay. Share. So this is the last slide. Uh. Okay, so everybody chant in the heart. Lah. Okay, yeah? Verse of transference of merits. May the merits I accrue today help me to eliminate my karmic debts. May they support the development of wisdom, which reveals the ultimate truth that all phenomena are my made. May the merits also ripen conditions that will distance me from those inverted views of samsara made real by the ego so as to awaken the deluded mind 
from this dreamlike world of illusion. Okay, this one is a new one we insert in for the comic creditors. Okay, all my unwholesome actions in the past had arisen from the three evil roots. In the presence of all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, I now sincerely repent all the sins and misdeeds that I have committed through my thought, speech, and actions. May the merits I accrue today be shared with all my karmic creditors. Together, we shall tread on this wonderful path of the Dharma until enlightenment and body, bo Buddhahood is dawn. Thank you. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank you, everybody. Let me a pure white lotus be on folding in on sorrow's train. Let all the gloom of misery be gathered in my lotus dream. Let each teardrop that started love or each white radiant flow reflect the mercy of love that is their place. bound to share Let every spark of vengeance roll Round lotus tops and twined And greet and light transform by love In lotus heart and shine Yeah. 